Salve te omnes. If you'd like to support the channel along with these patrons, I'd really appreciate the support. There's a link in the description box below. In this lesson, we're going to go through some of Liber Genesis from the Noa Vulgata. This is a translation of the Bible into classical Latin. Even for those who are not Christian, this translation of the Bible can be a good source of Latin reading material, since there are translations in many languages available free online, and because it is filled with many recognizable lines, like, let there be light. However, this lesson will be a little harder than usual, since I don't have control over the words, but it will also give you a good picture of the difficulty of native content. And maybe it will be easier than you think. Let's go! In principio creavit Deus caelum et terram. Even if you haven't read the Bible, you've probably heard this line. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The word principio means beginning, and maybe you can associate this with first principle. And creavit is the perfect past tense of creare and the connection to create is pretty clear. Why is it the perfect past tense? Because it happened once and was completed. The next phrase, though, is a description, so it's in the imperfect tense. Terra autum erat inanis et vacua. The earth, moreover, was void and empty. The last two words are easy to recognize once you see the connection to inane and vacuous. And what declension are these words? Hopefully you recognize that inanis is third declension, since we studied these nouns in the last lesson. And wakua is obviously first declension. The word autum is a conjunction with many different meanings, so it's a little tricky to translate sometimes. It often means however, but it can also just mean moreover or and, as it does here. So it was probably used just to avoid repeating et over and over, since this is what the next phrase and the one after that begin with, as we can see here. Et tenebrae super facium abusi. Tenebrae is kind of weird because it's only plural. I don't know if this will help, but I learned this word by imagining tentacles or tendrils in the darkness. Super is a preposition of position, so as you might be able to guess, super means over, and facium means face, so super facium abusi means over the abyss's face, or over the face of the abyss, as it's usually written. And notice that the verb erat is left out because it is obvious from context. However, the final phrase of the sentence has a more mysterious verb. Et spiritus dei peribatur superaquas. Look at the verb feribatur for a moment. I'm sure you see the tur ending, which tells us it's in the passive voice. But can you tell what tense this is? The ba tells us it's in the imperfect past tense. This is the word ferre, which means to bear or carry, as in to ferry something. So ferrebatur means was being carried, although in English translations this is usually written in active voice as and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. And what two different cases are dei and aquas? Dei is genitive and aquas is accusative plural. And here's the famous line. Dixitque Deus fiat lux et facta est lux. Remember, dicit becomes dixit in the perfect past tense, and this que suffix is another way of saying and. So the first part means and God said. The rest of the sentence is much harder. Both sentences contain the verb facio which we have worked with before, and we actually saw the form fiat in paternoster. This is the subjunctive passive form of facio, and as we know, this is an irregular verb, so we simply have to memorize this form. And the subjunctive form adds uncertainty to the statement. Particularly here, it is like saying, may the force be with you, where it is like a command, but with a hint of doubt that it can be carried out. 
So fiat lux means may light be made. We can remember the word lux from the word elucidate, where we make something clear by shining a light on it. The last part of the sentence involves a passive form that mirrors the English passive, but is actually a past tense version. We saw the imperfect past tense in the previous sentence, but here we're dealing with the perfect past tense. Facta is the participle of facio, in other words, made. But although facta est looks like the English passive, it actually means was made or has been made, because it's the perfect past tense. And the difficult part of this form is that the participle, facta, has to match the subject, even if the subject isn't stated, as we'll see a little later in this lesson. So this last part means, and the light was made. There's another new conjugation in the middle of the next sentence. Et vidit Deus lucum quod esset bona, et divisit Deus lucum ac tenebras. Esset is the imperfect subjunctive form of sum. Quod esset bona basically means that it was good. But there is some uncertainty in the statement, so it could be interpreted more like that it may have been good. And divisit is the perfect past tense of dividit, which obviously means divide. Then this word ac near the end is actually the short form of adque, which is ad plus que to, and, and. And this basically is just another way of saying and, in order to not repeat et all the time. So in sum, this sentence means, and God saw the light, that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. To continue, Apelawitque Deus lucum diem et tenebras noctem. An appellation is a name or title, so appellawit means named. But notice that both the things named and the names are in the accusative case, so we really only know which is which by context. You should be able to see, though, that this means, and God called the light day and the darkness night. Then the next line is, Factumque es vespere et mane dies unus. Here again is facta est, except it is the neutral version, factum, now. The neutral version is used because the unnamed subject is the generic it. So the beginning of this sentence means, and it was made, or, and it was done. Or sometimes more poetically, and it came to pass. This phrase, factum que est, is common in the Old Testament, so it's a good phrase to learn. This sentence also contains one of my favorite words, Vesper. It seems to capture the fleeting feeling of twilight in its sound. The word vesper is also an English word, but is a more poetic way of saying evening, so it's not frequently used. Mane means morning, and kind of sounds like someone saying this word with a really thick accent. And if you remember, we saw bonum mane in one of the dialogues, which means good morning. Now, as we saw in the last lesson, the ablative form can be used on its own as it is being done here with these two nouns. We use the ablative form for time expressions when we talk about when something happens, so it's like saying in the morning or in the evening, similar to how we use the ablative form following a preposition when we talk about where an action occurred, for example, in Silva, in the forest. And what do you think this means? Quid vespere facis? What are you doing in the evening? And try to say, I work in the morning. Mane laboro. Then the phrase ends with dies unas, which simply means one day. So altogether, this last phrase means, and it was made evening and morning one day. Or simply, and there was evening and morning one day. Okay, let's go through this passage one more time all the way through. In principio creavit Deus caelum et terram. Terra autem erat inanis et vacua 
et tenebrae superfacium abusi, et spiritus dei ferebatur super aquas. Dixit quae Deus, fiat lux, et facta est lux. Et vidit Deus lucem, quod esset bana, et divisit Deus lucem ac tenebras. Appellavit quae Deus lucem diem, et tenebras noctem. Factum quae est vespere et mane, dies unus. Okay, we'll tackle more of Genesis in the next lesson. See you then. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And if you can, help support the channel on Patreon, where there are audio downloads and transcripts of each dialogue and story. Gratias!